Hey, romance readers. Sorry I didn't get to post Tuesday or Thursday. Yeah, I'm in a reader slump right now. Uh, and all this Christmas stuff going on is not helping the situation. So, <laughs> sorry I didn't get to post. And uh, the two books I'm reading on, and they are not having the situation because they're going kind of slow. But I'm getting through them, so hopefully I have them finished by next week. I'm going to keep my fingers crossed. My goal for December was to finish 20 books, so I'm already off course. That's not happening. So I'm, I just might well get So whatever I read, that'll be what I read for December because I wanted to read 20 books, and that's not going to happen because, yeah, all this Christmas stuff going on. <laughs> And this little reader slump of me, and that's not helping this. Like I said, that's not helping this situation. So I'll read what I read. Hopefully, I can get through at least five or ten books. I hope so. So I'm gonna try to finish these two books up today. Hopefully, I can start reading something that really, really catches my interest, and I can just finish that up in one day. I hope so. I'm gonna keep my fingers crossed. So that's the update on that situation. And today, I'm coming to you with a book haul. Yes, I'm doing another book haul. I know on some channel people be like apologizing for doing book haul or they say their they're subscriber telling them, you know, you don't read a lot of books. You just buy books. Uh, but that's what I do. I'm a collector of books. I collect books. Whether I read them or not, I'm just a book collector. So whether I sh show you all the haul or not, I will still be buying books. So I just might as well go ahead and show you my, my little book haul if I, if I do one. Um, because I love having the actual physical book in my hand i love physical books i love going to the bookstore i have to yeah i have to stop myself sometimes because if i go in a bookstore i'm going to buy a book that's that's just the bottom line <laughs> because i love i just love going to the bookstore you know especially the not the uh not like Barnes and Noble. Most of the little bookstores that own, you know, by individuals. I forgot what they call them. What kind of? I don't, I cannot think. Sometimes my mind is just be out there. But just like a a bookstore that's owned by a person, and it just be like a little cozy bookstore. I love going in those because that's where you find oh. And if you notice on my channel, I have a lot of old books. I like finding the old old books from back in the day that have those fantastic covers, and I, I'm. I also buy books for covers too. I just like finding that that precious book or that book that have this like fantastic. You know, you just go in there, you look at the book, and then you're like, "Wow, this book has a fantastic cover. It's beautiful from back in the day when they actually physically the artist actually did the painting of the cover." I just like finding old books, so I always go to like um, in the individual what they call them. I can't think of. Those in what they call individual bookstores, or I can't think of what they call them, but just that like that mom and pop's bookstore. I love going to those kind of bookstores because you always find a treasure in those bookstores, whether it's a romance book or any kind of book. But like my genre is romance, but I read other books too. I'm just a book collector, so I do book hauls on this channel. And yeah, if I if I go to the store and buy books, I I don't mind. I love sharing it with you all out there. So. I do do a lot of book hauls, but that's because I love buying books and I'm a book collector. Whether I read them or not, it's just that I'll have it here. And if I want to read it, I know that. That's why I say I need to start doing a list of all the books I have. Because like I, I usually end up buying a book twice. <laughs> because, you know, you read the back of it, you know what kind of books you like. And you're usually drawn to that same book. So even if I don't remember the book, I'll be drawn, I'll be drawn to that same synopsis. Because it be certain, it's certain things that you look for when you read a book. And when you read that synopsis and it attracts you, it usually be that same synopsis that will attract me again. And I was like, I think I already got this book when I get home and I start reading or whatever. Yeah, that's how I go. But anyway, I'm going on and on. And I do have a book haul. Um, right after, you know, after Thanksgiving, they usually do, you have the Black Friday sale. So I went on Book Outlet. I had stopped going on Book Outlet because, yeah, that can be your downfall right there. <laughs> I said, let me quit going on Book Outlet, but since it was Black Friday, that's, yeah, why not? It's Black Friday. Everything should be a little bit cheaper than what it already is. So, I was like, let me go on here. So, I went on there, and yes, I did go a little overboard. And I got a book haul from back, I got a book haul from Book Outlet. It's my Black Friday book haul. So, let's get started. Get my box here. Oh, 
I don't know if I can fit this, but I'm going to have to move some of this stuff. How do you like my little decoration? I did decorate my little table here. And I did put up a Christmas tree. I wasn't going to put up a tree, but it kept bugging me. So I went ahead and put the tree up. And it's like a little Charlie Brown. Have you ever seen the Charlie Brown Christmas? They got that little uh, skates tree there. Yeah, that's how my tree is looking right now. So I had to go out and buy some stuff, try to fill it up, to fill in the little uh, spaces. So it's looking, it's looking pretty good. And if you want some decoration, go to the Dollar Tree. They always have some nice decoration there. And I didn't have to spend a lot of money. I just got a lot of little decorations so I can fill my little tree up. And it's looking kind of cute here. So I was like, let me decorate my little area here. I got my little uh, paper here. It looks like it's from back in the 1800s. <laughs> I like this kind of I like this kind of style. Uh, that's why I like reading history. Anything that looks historical. I'm all in. That's why I love re reading historical romances. I'm just a historical. I love and I love history. A uh, person watch the History Channel all the time. Yes, anything that's dealing with history, I love it. And I love this paper here, so I put it down. I also bought this from the Dollar Tree. Love is the answer. I thought it was so cute. I like uh, the little reef here. I thought that was really cute. Anything with love on it, I buy that too. You know, yeah. The rom it's the romantic in me. <laughs> And I, I think you've seen this before. I got my little, this is a little uh, potpourri holder. And it had love on it. I bought that. And I got a little bird. I think I got this from the Dollar Tree too, that little bird. I got these cards from the Dollar Tree. I thought they were so cute. Um, have yourself a merry little Christmas. And uh, this one right here, the most wonderful time of the year. I said I put this up here as decoration. And I got another little... Um, love uh thing i bought i don't know what i got this from but i thought it was cute like i say anything with love or dealing with uh you know that situation i would purchase it and i'm also a frog collector i think you've seen some frogs i had on here before frogs and um turtles yeah i collect those and i said let me decorate this i hope you like i got my little lights over there so but i'm gonna move some of this out of the way so we can get to opening this box I got here. Move this over here. Uh, see here. And here's the book outlet box. My camera might go out, but I'll just turn it back on. That's the good thing about me standing up right next to the camera. I can just uh, uh, push the record button again and it'll keep on rolling. Uh, let's get this open. Yeah. How's uh how's everyone Christmas going so far? Are oh, you yeah. are you through uh Christmas shopping? Are you still Christmas shopping? Have you got all your um Christmas decorations up and everything? I think I mentioned on here for I hate uh putting all them decorations up and then when Christmas over it it feel like a letdown, Christmas over, you gotta take all this stuff down. It's just yeah, it get depressing to me. I think I mentioned that before. <laughs> uh the first thing I have in here is this book outlet up oh, everybody getting into the coloring uh stuff like so you can i guess this is a coloring card book card that's cute let's see what's on the back here oh they gave me uh four dollars off if i spend twenty dollars or more i get four dollars off here's our way of saying thank you well thanks book outlet i sure do appreciate you <laughs> here's my um invoice here with my books I can tell you the price of them so can get this open here paper out of here uh first up I have is uh Carolyn Sparks I used to read her a long time ago so I married a sorcerer um she's a good uh, author I used to buy a lot of her books let me see when this was published because look I like I said I'll be buying so many books. I probably bought this before. Nope, but this was in 2017. So I haven't read any of her books. Um, and to, I read her books what, back in the 1990s or whatever. So no, I haven't read this one. So I married a sorcerer. I read a little bit of the synopsis on this. Destined for doom or desire. Growing up on the Isle of Moon. Oh, what is it? Brid Bridgetta? Brigetta knew that she was born with the magical powers of the embrace, even if she did not know how to wear them. But she has finally learned the truth. Brigetta is the lost princess of the kingdom of Torin. She was sent 
into hiding as an infant to escape the wrath of her half-brother, the king. And now he knows just where to find her. To find her, Rupert is a notorious pirate and sorcerer who can harness the wind with his hands. He spent most of his life plotting revenge on the evil king, and Rupert believes that Brigetta could be the key to finally destroying his enemy. So when this was dealing with magic and sorcerer, uh, I was like, okay, let me try this out. I hope it's good. And like I said, I've read Carolyn Sparks before. She's a good writer. I've enjoyed her book. She used to do a lot of paranormal. And if you can see, that's the spine there. And it's a paranormal romance. Carolyn Sparks. So I married a sorcerer. And I think I mentioned before I like when the characters get married before the book ends. So I guess they're going to get married before the book ends. So that was a, also a deal breaker for me of purchasing, purchasing this book. And what did I pay for this? So I married a sorcerer. I paid. This was a dollar and 53 cent for a brand new book. You can't beat that. Fan freaking tastic. Love it. Next, I have A Beautiful Wedding. I think this is like a novelette to, uh, oh, what, were, uh, what were their names? I can't remember. But this was a novelette. I think I read uh, the, her book before, this book, the book, and I wanted the novelette. I can't think of uh, Abby, Abby and Trevor. This is a... Uh, to Beautiful Disaster. I think this is a, a little novelette to when they go and get married. So I was like, I had to get this because I read Beautiful Disaster. I enjoyed it. And this is everything about Abby. Abby and Trevor's elopement was top secret until now. Fans of Beautiful Disaster and Walking Disaster will get all of their question answered in this whirlwind tale of the wedding day and night. And as with all good stories, this one would definitely have been worth the wait. So I bought this little novelette. Of Abby, Abby and Trevor's elopement. I wanted to see. I like. Let me see what happened when they went and went off and got married. So this is a novelette to a beautiful disaster, and this is a beautiful wedding by Jamie McClure. And let me see how much I paid for this one. This was look. This costs three dollars, and look at this. Look at this, and this costs a dollar. Oh, what are they doing at it? Okay. <laughs> $3. Really, people, they could have had this for a dollar. Really not a dollar. Look at that. But I guess you're paying for it. It was a big, that um, beautiful disaster was a big hit for her. And so I guess you're going to, when uh, you got, uh, when your book is real popular, it don't matter what you write, uh, a 100 page book or a 50 page book. If they think they can make money off of it, they will, especially if it's real, real popular. So I guess that's why that was $3 because Beautiful Disaster was a, a big hit for uh, Jamie McClure. Uh, next, I have Lush by Lauren Dane. I've been planning on a read uh, book by Lauren Dane, but I never did. So when I saw this, I went ahead and got this. Um, I like this cover. And that's the spine of it. I'll read a little bit of this. Mary Whaley has her hands full running a successful catering company and overseeing her supper club. She has everything she ever wanted or so she thought. When she meets ridicul ridicul ridiculously hot and very dirty rock star Damian Hurley at her friend's engagement party. The attraction she feels is overwhelming and she isn't about to deny herself. Well, I said, well, go ahead on, girl. Lush, a delicious novel, Laura Dane. When I and when I found out she's like a, uh, she owns her own catering company and she's like a chef or whatever. I was like, okay, I'm, I like that uh, occupation for one, either the male character or the female character. You know, like be a chef or whatever. And they're talking about food. I would like that kind of. So I was like, plus, uh, like I said, I wanted to read Lord Lauren Dane, and when it had the that the female is a chef she owns her own catering company or whatever i was like okay so and there you go lauren dane lush a delicious novel and i paid uh how much i paid for this um this one cost three dollars this one was three dollars next i have uh Penelope Douglas, I, I've been planning on reading her book, but I never uh, got a chance. So when I saw this, I went ahead and got it. And this is Misconduct 
Look at that. Um, yeah, they're doing some misconduct in the office there. Yeah. <laughs> All up in the blind. <laughs> and that's the spine right there. And let's read a little bit of this. Uh, and this was right up my alley too, alley too because I was a big tennis watching fan. But uh, back in the day, so when it said former tennis player, I was like, okay, I'm all in. Former tennis player Easton Brad Bradbury is trying to be the best teacher she can be, trying to reach her board students, trying to forget her past. What brought her to this stage in her life isn't important. She can't let it be. But now one parent-teacher meeting may be her undoing. Meeting Tyler Merrick. For the first time, makes it easy for Easton to see why his son is having trouble in school. The man knows how to manage businesses and well, but not a living, breathing teenage boy or a young teacher for that matter, though he tries to. And yet there is something about him that draws Easton in, a hint of vulnerability, a flash of attraction, a spark that might burn. This sounded interesting. Uh, um, like she used to be a tennis tennis player and now she's a teacher and she's going to meet this businessman uh through her son through uh one of her students i was like okay i hope this is good look at that cover yeah they're doing too much misconduct by penelope douglas let me see how much this costs misconduct um uh, this was this was also three dollars misconduct by so now i get to read a book by penelope douglas that only costs three dollars because uh, I think her regular books, if you get them off of Amazon, they're definitely not three dollars. Uh, next, I have this look like the same cover I had before, but it's not. This is Rules of Contact by J.C. Burton. Some of her covers be looking the same, but uh, you know, I had another book by her about it was on uh, dealing with the Olympics. Um, this one is dealing with a football player, Rules of Contact. And there's the uh, spine right there by J.C. Burton. And I'll read a little bit of this. A defensive end for the San Francisco Sabres. Flynn Cassidy is used to being in the spotlight, though he doesn't enjoy it. But if getting in front of the camera will help him, Getting in front of the cameras will help his new restaurant succeed. He's willing. Now if he can just meet a woman who loved him and not his fame. After her divorce, Amelia Lawrence is thrilled to start over as head chef. There's another one dealing with uh, with the occupation um, with uh, the female being a uh, chef. At 90... Amelia Lawrence is thrilled to start over as head chef at 92. It's exactly the opportunity she needs to heat up her career. If only she wasn't wildly attracted to her sexy new boss. Their chemistry might be sizzling hot, but Amelia has no intention of being burnt again. So I guess this club is going to be called 92. Maybe, um, that sounded pretty good. The, um. I like that, and like I said, what sold me is that she's a chef. So I was like, let me give this a try. I hope this is, I hope this is good. I hope I like this better than I like the the Olympic one that she wrote. Uh, let me see, did they have a name in here for what was that? Uh, what they called Melting the Ice? I think it, I think it was or something like that. I forgot what the name of that book was that I read. Uh, I don't remember, but I think I gave it like three stars. I hope this, I hope I get this for, I hope this is a little bit better. I hope this is a little four or five star book. And that's J.C. Burton, Rules of Contact. And this is her play-by-play -play, uh, series, uh, sports series. And there you go. Let me see what I paid for this one. Sorry, the camera went out. Uh, let me see what I paid for Rules of Engagement. I paid, this was $3.35. $3.35. So that's not bad. Like I said, you can't get them off of uh, Amazon for $3. Next, I got Heather McCollum, Tangle Hearts. I never heard of this uh, author before. And this is a Highland Hearts. I guess this is a Highland Hearts series. And there's the back cover, the sp spine cover there. And I'll read a little bit of this. Growing up on a pirate ship every day was full of adventure for Pandora Wyatt. It was also the perfect place for her to use her magic without persecution so this is another one dealing with paranormal um situation and that's why i got this one too i like uh reading about either the female character is psychic or she's like has she's a witch or something i like reading about those kind of uh, characters but after let me start all over 
Growing up on a pirate ship, every day was full of adventure for Pandora White. It was also the perfect place for her to use her magic without persecution. But after her surrogate father is imprisoned in the Tower of London, Pandora leaves the safety of the vessel to res rescue him before he's executed. She expects her mission to be difficult, but what she doesn't expect is to have her life saved by the sexiest man she's ever met. And he's a Highland warrior. Uh, uh, Erwin or o U Ewan? Yeah, I can't pronounce that name. I'm just going to say Edwin Brody or Ewan Brody always wanted a sweet, uncomplicated woman by his side, but he can't fight his attraction to the beautiful enchantress who stumbled into his life. And I like this cover. You got the little boats there. That was pretty neat. Tangled Heart by Heather McCollum. And let me see what this one calls. Tangled Hearts. Uh, this one was $3.77. Uh, let's see what else I got in here. I got another, this time I'm going to try my Bain's contemporary novel because uh, that uh, historical didn't do it for me. And this one is Keep Me Safe. And this is a slow burn. This I guess this is from her slow burn series. My Bain's Keep Me Safe. And there's the uh, spine cover there. And I'll read a little bit of this. When Caleb Devereaux, younger sister, is kidnapped, the scone of a powerful and wealthy family turns to an unlikely source for help. A beautiful and sensitive woman with a gift of finding answers others cannot. So this is this. She's psychic. That's why I got this one. While, while Raimi can connect to victims and locate them by feeling their pain, her ability comes with a price. Every time she uses it, it costs her a piece of herself. Helping the, helping the, inf, inf, uh, what is that word? Helping the infatuately attractive and impatient Caleb successfully find his sister nearly destroy her. Even though his sexual intensity draws her like a magnet, she never she needs to get as far away from him as she can. What is this for? Emphatically? Yeah, I ain't even going to try to go there. <laughs> but this is my bank. Keep me safe. And the heroine is going to be psychic. So I was like, let me give this a try. And this is Mile Banks. And this is a slow from her slow burn series. And let me see how much this costs. Keep me safe. Uh, it was, this was a dollar 88 and this is the first book in the series. Next I have While the Duke Sleep and this is a road file. This is from Sophie Jordan. She's a pretty good uh, writer. Um, this is her road series, the road, the road file series and it's a historical. Uh, read a little bit of this shop. So when she, I, this caught my attention, shop girl. So I like reading about historical where the female is not rich. She, you know, she working for a living. So I'm like, yeah, let me try this one out. Shop girl Poppy Fairchurch, Fairchurch knows it's pointless fascinate, fa fantasizing about the Duke of Altenberry. Still, dreams can't hurt anyone. Unlike the carriage Poppy spies bearing down upon the unsuspecting Duke. After she pulls him to safety, the Duke lapses into a coma and Poppy is mistaken for his fiance. But one person isn't fooled. His arrogant and much too handsome half-brother, Stuart or Sturin McKenzie. Soon Poppy isn't sure what she wants more, the fantasy of her Duke or the reality of one <clears throat> smothering Scott who challenges her at every turn. <coughs> Something got in my throat. And there's the inside of it. And it's while the Duke was sleeping. I should have been told y'all the Wendy book was published. So I go with this one. This was 2016. And this is the Rogue File. This is her Rogue File series, Sophie Jordan. And let me see how much this was this one calls. The Rogue Files. Where is it? On here. Uh, is it on here? I don't see it. A beautiful wedding. I don't even see this one on here. Nope, I don't see it. Hmm, am I overlooking it? I don't see it. Well, I'm going to move on because I don't even see this on here. Oh, there it is right there. This was $1.88. The Rogue File series. $1.88. Next, I have... 
Caught by You. Uh, I got this called This is sport, Sports Romance. A Love Between the Baseball. This is another. They doing a, They be doing a lot of series. And this is by Jennifer Bernard. I never read anything about her before. A Sports Contemporary Romance. And there's the uh, side cover there. And let's read a little bit of this. Months of alternate, alternately flirting and bickering with Kilby Catfish Catcher. Mike Solo just turned into the hottest kiss of Donna McIntyre's life, and that's a major league complication. Any hit of scandal could keep her from getting her son back from her well-connected ex. Then Mike comes up with a game-changing idea, a marriage proposal that could help her win her case, even if even as it jeopardizes her heart. So that sounded interesting, a sexy baseball theme series. And this is Caught by You. And by Jennifer Bernard. And let me see how much this cost. Uh, this was a dollar eighty-eight. And let me see when this was published. Okay, uh, here, knocking stuff down. This was published in two thousand sixteen. Uh, these next two. If I had to do these were hardback, I wouldn't have got them, but. These two, I got two, these two here, a hardback. Uh, I got another Tessa Dare. Uh, I read another one of her books uh, earlier and I enjoyed it. Do you want to start a scandal? I thought this was going to be a softback. I'm not into the hardback, especially romance book. I like getting them all in a, a softback. Let's see here. Uh, read a little bit of this. Was it? If you can't see, I can't see here. You know, it got the... Um, the synopsis is written on this cover here. When was it Lord can be with, with the maid or the on the diving or Miss Fairchild with a wreck against the wall? Perhaps the butler did it. All Charlotte High would know is this. It wasn't her. But rumors to the contrary was buzzing. Unless she can discover the lover's true identity, she'll be forced to marry Pierce Brans Branston. Lord Cranville, the coldest, most arrogant, handsome gentleman she's ever had this misfortune to embrace. When it comes to emotion, the man hasn't got a clue. And that sounded interesting. But I sure wish I had a it was uh, knew it was going to be a hardback. I wouldn't have purchased it, but it's okay. And it's Tessa Dare. Do you want to start a scandal? Let me see how much that costs for this hardback. Do you want to start a scandal? Uh, I, I guess this 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 uh, price should have been a clue. It was five dollars and fifty nine cent. Yeah. <laughs> Next, I have uh, my banks. This also came in a uh, hardback. Just one touch. This look like it doesn't look. This look like it done had a hard time. Let's see what this says. Yep. Look at that on the side. If you can see it there. It looked like it had been uh, through the grinder a little bit. I'll read a little bit of this. Raised in a strict religious cult since she was... So that would attract my attention to this. She was in a cult. So I was like, okay, this might be good. Raised in a strict religious cult since she was a young girl, Jenna has no connection to the outside world beyond vague flashes of memory that seem to be from another life. Memories she clings to when the cult leader discovers her extraordinary ability to heal so this is another one dealing with a psychic uh, character and punishes and punish her. Years held captive and forced to do the cult's bidding have turned Jenna into a meek timid woman or so they think. In truth she is m merely biding her time waiting for the perfect moment to escape. When a terrified young woman tries to steal the SUV of Devereaux's security toughest recruit, Isaac Anger quickly turns into a strange sort of protective for the beautiful bruised stranger. But when they are caught in a firestorm of bullet and Isaac is hit, he's sure the end is near until Jana touches him and closes his wound. So that sounded interesting. And this is from um, Maya Banks. Uh, this is part of that... Uh, Slow Burn series, the earlier book that I showed to you. And let me see when this was published. Uh, let's see here. Uh, this was published in 2017. And um, her other book that I had over here. And this is the other book in the Slow Burn series. Let me see when this was published. This was 2014. Okay, and let me see how much the uh, 
just one touch uh, cost. Uh, it was also $5.59. Oh, and let me see when this Tessa Bell book was published. I don't know if I showed you that or not. Uh, this was published in 2016. I have two more books here, and then we'll be finished. Uh, I got Heartless here by Kate Martin. I don't I kind of remember reading a book by Kate Martin, but not really. And this is a contemporary. So I said, let me give it a try. I kind of remembered her. So that's why I kind of bought this. Because I was like, I think I've read Kate Martin before. So let's read a, bit, a little bit of this. To escape her life of poverty as a tenant farmer's daughter, Ariel Summers made a bargain with the devil. She will become the Earl of Greenville's mistress in exchange for the schooling and refinement of a lady. But she couldn't foresee the Earl's untimely death or her or her own disturbing attraction to his bastard son and heir, Justin Ross. So that sounded interesting. And let's see when this was published. Uh, this was published in 2001. It's a historical. And there's the side spine right there. And it's Heartless by Cat Martin. Have any of you read anything by Cat Martin? Is she a good writer? Because I can't remember. I think I've read some, but I can't remember. And let me see how much this cost. Heartless. This was uh, $2.23. And the last book I have here. Get rid of this. Is Sophie Barnes, A Most Unlikely Duke. I've been seeing this a lot. And I kept saying I was going to get it. So when I saw it on Book Outlet, I went ahead and got it. And this is the side cover here, if you can see it, the side spine. And we'll read a little bit of this. Ralph Matthews hadn't stepped foot in polite circles since a tragedy left his once noble family impoverished and in debt. The bare no I bought this because he's a boxer. So I was like, yeah, let me get this. The bare knuckle boxer has spent the last 15 years eking out and existing for himself and his two sisters. But when a sudden, but when a stunning Reversal of fortune lands Ralph the title of Duke of Huntsley. He's determined to make a go of becoming a proper lord, but he'll need a little help, and his captivating neighbor might be just the woman for the job. So when I found out, when I read that he's a boxer, I was like, yeah, that sounds good. So let me give it a try. And this was published in 2017. And that's Sophie Barnes, a most unlikely Duke. And how much did I pay for this? A most unlikely Duke. If I can find it, there it is, right there. I paid a dollar eighty-eight. So most of the historicals were a dollar eighty-eight. So that's all my. This is my little book haul here. All of these. Put them over here. There and this one. I got all of these this size, quite a few. I guess I can read this little one here. I can go right through that one, the little uh, novelette. That size, and then I got all of these and two hardback. So that's all I have for now. Uh, hopefully I can come back next week. I have some updates keeping my finger crossed that I can get through a couple five books before next week <laughs> but until then that's all I have for now keep enjoying your day have a fantastic Saturday keep having a fantastic Saturday and I'll see you all next week either Tuesday or Thursday keep reading those romances see you later bye